Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to the second lesson in Week 9, and we're looking at organic reactions. In the last lesson, we looked at addition reactions. In this lesson, there is going to be a video on elimination reactions, and I want you to watch the mindset video very, very carefully to make sure you understand elimination reactions. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the lesson in our series on organic reactions. Today's lesson is about elimination. We know that in an addition reaction, two molecules add together. When an unsaturated molecule is added to another molecule, a saturated product is formed. Today, we will look at elimination. If you understand addition, today's lesson is very simple. The reason is that elimination is the opposite of addition. Elimination starts with one molecule and removes a part to make two molecules. We start with the saturated molecule, which breaks into a smaller piece and an unsaturated molecule. This is the exact opposite of addition. We can see that the new organic molecule is unsaturated and now contains a double bond. Elimination is a very useful process. At the moment, most of the alkenes in industry are manufactured from oil. One of the new ways to make alkenes like ethane begins with alcohols. Here we have ethanol. When heat and a catalyst like sulfuric acid are added to ethanol, Ethene and water are produced. Let's go to the lab to make some cyclohexene from ethanol. Hello again. I've been looking forward to this reaction for quite some time. I'm really excited to show you an elimination reaction. This reaction can be quite dangerous as we're using a concentrated acid during the reaction. This must be handled with extreme care. I'm using cyclohexanol as a starting molecule or reactant. In addition, I've added sulfuric acid to catalyze the removal and elimination of water in the dehydration reaction. Once this is all ready, we need to heat the mixture to boiling point. Now we allow the organic magic to take place. As you can see, some products are coming across in the condenser. Look carefully. We can clearly see that there are two substances which do not mix. I suspect that one of these might be cyclohexene if our reaction has taken place. To see if our reaction has made an alkene, we will again add a drop of bromine and see if it discolors. I'll pour off a little of this distillate into this test tube. When we add bromine to this, we can see that the color rapidly disappears. How do you like that? We've made an alkene from an alcohol. Don't forget, we saw that two substances were made during this elimination reaction. This must be the eliminated water that you learnt about. Guys, it's been really exciting to show you so much interesting chemistry. I love organic chemistry. But remember, always do these experiments under a teacher's supervision. Thanks for that, Philip. So we have learned that alcohols make alkenes when they are dehydrated. Now use the structural formulae to write out a balanced chemical reaction for the elimination reaction of cyclohexanol. If you drew this diagram, you would be correct. Notice how the water molecule can be spotted in the first step. The sulfuric acid in this reaction is a catalyst and that is why it is written above the arrow. Let's see if you can predict the outcome of the dehydration of a butane 2 or L. Was it difficult to find the water molecule on a butane 2 or L? That's right, there's more than one answer. When the water is removed from a butane 2 or L, it can happen both ways. This is the first water molecule that can be detached. This is the second. 
the product from the removal of the water molecule at the end would be but one in. Notice how double bond forms at the end of the chain. What if we choose this water molecule on butan 2 or L? What would the product be if we remove this water molecule? In this case, we would predict that but 2 in is the product. The double bond is now in the middle of the chain. So we see that either water molecule can be removed. When we compare the two products, we find that both are actually made. We also find that more but 2 in is made. There is a way to predict which product is more likely to form. This is very similar to the rule for addition. The double bond forms between carbon atoms that have less hydrogen atoms attached to them. Here is the butane molecule. We can see on the structure of butan 2 or L that the carbon atoms that are highlighted have the least hydrogen atoms attached. The double bond forms between these carbon atoms. When we look at the carbon atoms at the end, they have more hydrogen atoms. So, of the two possibilities for products in elimination, the product that is most likely to form is but 2 in. That's because the double bonded atoms have more carbon atoms attached to them and fewer hydrogens. The reaction which we just discussed is the opposite of hydration. So, we call the removal of a water molecule in this way dehydration. Now let's look at dehydrohalogenation. Dehydrohalogenation is the opposite when we remove a hydrohalogen. In this example, remove a hydrohalogen such as hydrogen bromide from this molecule and draw the product. Notice that there is only one possible organic product. Hydrogen bromide is removed to make propene. Notice where the double bond forms. The double bond can form only between the first and last carbon atoms. Don't forget to show the molecule that is removed. This is hydrogen bromide. So we have learned that organic molecules can react in addition reactions. We also learned that the opposite of addition is elimination. One of the most useful addition reactions is the manufacture of plastics by addition of alkenes to make polymers. The opposite of polymerization is called cracking. In other words, cracking is a reaction when a large molecule is broken into smaller parts. When a long chain hydrocarbon is found in oil, it can be broken into a smaller alkane and alkene. Cracking is a useful reaction because most of the hydrocarbon molecules found in oil are too long to be used as fuels. So, if we heat the mixture with special catalysts, we can break up longer molecules like wax and tar. The products are smaller, more useful molecules like those found in petrol and diesel. The bond between carbon atoms is very strong, so scientists use high temperature and pressure or a catalyst at a lower temperature. The molecule in this diagram is decane. It has been drawn in this way so that you can see where the break in the chain will happen. Can you name the two products? We eliminate the hydrocarbon at the top of the diagram, and this leaves behind an alkene. Cracking can break the chain in many places, but we always make an alkene and an alkane. Small alkanes make great fuels. The alkenes are also very useful. We use them to make plastics. Let's recap on some of the types of elimination we learned about today. When we start with an alcohol, we see that water can be removed in dehydration reactions. This requires a catalyst like sulfuric acid or aluminium oxide. When we start with a haloalkane, a hydrohalogen can be removed by using sodium hydroxide. This is called dehydrohalogenation. Lastly, we saw that an alkane can be removed from a bigger molecule using a catalyst or very high pressure and temperature. This produces an alkene as well. We call this cracking.
Test your knowledge about elimination. When elimination occurs from the 2-bromo-3-methylpentane in this diagram, draw all the possible products of the reaction. Include the reaction conditions as well. Also mention if there are any products which are more likely to be formed. Two products are formed. The top product is the major product. The other product is hydrogen bromide. Until next time, check out the other videos as well as the task video or look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.